All right, welcome to the uh, ongoing adventures of the Three Whiskey Bravo. We are uh, still in um, Indianapolis, landed at uh, KUMP uh, yesterday, um, and uh, Indianapolis Regional, if memory serves, in a nice flight from Duluth. We're doing a full flight today. I do about one of these a week for no one to ever see, uh, but it's a short one. Uh, we're flying from uh, Indianapolis to uh, to Cincinnati, uh, KCVG, uh, Kilo Charlie Victor Golf. So I've already pre-programmed the uh, uh, flight plan into the Four Flight app, and I have to comment: I've never seen a, such a short flight with so many waypoints. It's really very detailed. Um, uh, the weather along. Still have some uh, thunderstorm activity here, as you can hear. Weather along the way uh, is uh, going to be, at least on the satellite imagery I'm looking at, clouds. Uh, so we may be IMC for this, but it should be a pretty quick flight. Uh, let's get set up. We'll go through our standard uh, startup procedures. We'll make sure our parking brake is set. It is. We'll move our crash bar up. We'll set our main generator to on. And we'll set our battery. Now that this is done, In the clearance delivery dumper, no we'll get IFR clearance. Bravo IFR to Cincinnati, ready to copy. We'll select our fuel selector to auto, and our AP trim to on. So we'll set this Departure number at, at 11,000. Now he'll. We'll read this back to the ATC and they'll confirm read back correct. Dopper November 343 Whiskey Bravo cleared to Cincinnati Airport as filed. Climb and maintain 11,000 feet. I set this to 1,000 1, feet higher than they clear me to for technical reasons I don't need to go into right now. Sim related. Sim related reasons. Set our current barometer. 2970. Okay. So. Uh, now we'll make sure we get uh, our nav lights and strobe lights on and we will fire it up. Just make sure ignition is set to auto, which it is, and then we'll take starter. And there we go. We'll watch the NG percentage here until it gets to about 13, 11, 12, and 13. Then we'll move this up to low idle. We'll continue to monitor our NG percentage. Until it gets to about 52, basically in the green zone right here. At which point we'll move the throttle to high idle and then to taxi. 50, 51, 52. We're in the green, high idle, and taxi. Hmm. Well, that didn't work. Trying to, trying to figure out what, what happened there. I, uh, it's my standard okay. starting procedure. Let's try that one more time. Starter. Well, at least you know I'm not selectively editing this. <laughs> hey, our fuel... Ox BP. Let's get our fuel pump on. That might have been it. At good to go now to low idle. Monitor that NG percentage 29, 36, 40. Get in the green. There we go. There we go. Might have been that ox boost pump. Okay. Pressurize the airplane. Get our pedo light, pedo heat on. Almost certain to need it. This is a low altitude IFR flight. I think we're cleared up to 19,000 feet. Looks like there might be somebody on final right now. Zoom in here a little bit. This will also be a good opportunity for me to uh, switch our nav source to FMS to see if that weird bug that I had mentioned of the uh, ATC uh, ribbons, the taxi ribbons, not going away. And I speculated that might have been my fault for a reason I didn't go into, but this may, this will be an opportunity to to uh, figure that out. 
All right. So we'll go... Remember, there is no tower here. We'll finish our checks list, by the way. Uh, Pedo heat's on. Inertial separator. Let's get that on. Glad I checked. AP set up with uh, altimeter. Barometer is confirmed. AP trim is on. Yaw damper. Get that as well. And then our vertical speed selector. Let's put that to... 1,800 feet per minute on climb out. Our heading selector armed, so we can... There is... Looks like there is somebody landing. Oh, check that out. Sweet. Oh, that's so cool. That's a real person, by the way, folks. Okay, so... Um, let's see how this goes. Zoom in here. Acknowledge the master caution. And... Uh, We'll uh, announce that uh, we're going to attune traffic at 123.00. Winds are out of the south, by the way. And we'll announce that we're taxiing. Kilo uniform now let's watch close for those blue ribbons. Let's see if they come in. Or somebody else is leaving. Deactivate the parking. don't need pushback on this. There's the blue ribbon, so now this is going to be the... Uh, while we're taxiing, I'll, I'll comment that my theory, let's activate our taxi lights, was that the blue ribbons never went away because I never t uh, radioed that I was taking off. So as far as the sim was concerned, I was still trying to taxi and it didn't understand why I was in the air. Which sounds weird, but it, it makes what I call sim sense using the feet to taxi here, so... Kilo uniform, I pop the traffic, generic November. Pretty good wind. Sierra Victor is clear of the runway. That's the guy who just landed. See the wind here? Wind socks are designed that if they're straight, uniform, it's 15 traffic, knots. Generic November, one two Sierra Victor is clear of the runway. And we... The weather is that the winds are right now out of the south at uh, 13 knots, so that that, that sock de uh, depiction is accurate. That's kind of cool to know that they put that kind of detail in it. There's that guy who just landed. He's taxiing now to parking. We'll do our flap takeoff setting right now. It's windy, so this could be an interesting takeoff. Oh, speaking of wind. PFD settings. Other PFD settings. Wind. Option two. That's the one I like. Yeah, you see there's the wind now being depicted. 13 knots from behind us, which is what you'd expect because we're going to turn around here in a second and it'll be right in our face. But f but a 14 knot, 14 knots is pretty good. And it doesn't appear as though it's a... It's a little bit of a crosswind. In other words, it will be coming sort of from our right slightly. Okay, here's our takeoff space. Our takeoff uh, turn. Use our brakes, tow brakes. We'll stop there at the line. I don't think anybody's inbound, but we uh, never just go out onto the runway without announcing that we're going to do so. Especially at an uncontrolled airport. Okay. Stop here. Not a long runway either, 3,800 feet, but long enough. Still, still got some lightning in the area. Uh, activate pulse lights and landing lights. Confirm pedos eats on. Confirm flaps are at takeoff. We'll taxi onto the runway, but we'll first. And I gotta get better about this uh, when we're uh, when I'm on an uncontrolled airport on this CTAF, CTAF, uh, to say where I am. So we're gonna say that we're departing south. Kilo uniform, Mike Papa, traffic Docker, November three four tray whiskey Bravo taking off runway one five south departure.
Now, the only remaining question is whether uh, this thing here continues to give us problems. If it does, then it proves that my theory was incorrect. And I'm concerned right now because we, I still see the blue ribbons. They haven't gone away. So uh, my guess is we're going to have to deal with that pain in the butt, which will involve deactivating them, which also means we'll lose ATC automation. But that's okay on such a short flight because I'm, I'm not going anywhere anyway. Okay. Uh, sync heading bug to our current heading, 148. And let's roll. And be prepared as we start our takeoff roll for this weird number thing to start floating around. Okay, anyway, here we go. Slight crosswind from our right, as you can see. There it is. Damn it. Oh. And we're up. Positive rate. Gear up. And flaps. Retracted. We'll deal with that stupid thing in a second. Automate. Or go autopilot now. Right now we're just flying runway heading. Now that we're stable on our takeoff, I'm going to uh, switch over to nav mode instead of heading mode. And it'll turn right to intercept this magenta line. To departure, 127.150. Altimeter's unchanged at 2970. Radio altimeter showing 2,000 feet above ground. So let's deal with this annoying thing. Let's just get it over with. <sighs> so frustrating, really. Navigation aids, taxi ribbon off. Apply and save. Back to your business. Still a few little bugs, not, not the least of which is the fact that we were hearing thunder and I don't see any cloud in the sky. Uh, earlier I mentioned that the weather was going to be cloudy, and it is. We are just west. Well, it, well I shouldn't say it is. It should be. I have, I've noticed the weather seems to be pretty accurate in the sim, uh, but hey, listen, you never know. Regardless. My, the satellite imagery shows that Indianapolis has a significant cloud cover. Just engines a little hot there. Just to the east uh, and beyond. So we'll see if we get into some weather here. I think I do see some clouds out on the horizon. But we'll see here soon enough. Inertial separator off. Flaps are retracted. Gear is up. Keep our pitot heat on, obviously. Outside air temperature 17 degrees, but it'll get colder because we're going up to 19,000 feet. Farmland. Current estimated time en route to destination is 35 minutes. That's going to uh, drop pretty significantly as we pick up speed. We're only 110 miles though from uh, from the airport, so it's a short hop. Winds now, 20 knots, 21. Winds aloft, we call them. Not seeing anything on the MFD in terms of anything that needs our attention. Torque percentage 87, prop RPM 2000, NG percentage 85, ITT 605 degrees Celsius, which is all within 
operational limits. Fuel-wise, 35 gallons in the left, 30 in the right. Don't need a lot of gas for this flight, so quick. Amps and volts all in the green. Flaps up, obviously. Trim all uh, set, elevate, elevator trim, rudder and aileron trim. All set, just fine. I think I may have for Did I forget to? No, I didn't. Okay. When we land, I'll probably reactivate those uh, taxi ribbons, if for no other reason than just to see if it still thinks I'm at my departure airport. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, it's sort of an experiment just to try to do some troubleshooting as to what could be causing that. I, I have noticed that it only seems to happen at uncontrolled airports. In other words, when I'm at a towered airport, those blue ribbons go away when I go out onto the runway. That's what led me to believe that it might be a function of my failure to announce my takeoff intentions. The heater on here a little bit. 12 degrees out now. Number 3 West Key Bravo, contact Indianapolis Center on 119 or decimal 55. 19.55 here at the same Good day. 119 or decimal 55, Docker Trey Whiskey Bravo. Annapolis Center, this is Dayo 3 Whiskey Bravo with you at flight 10,000 or 11,000. Center, Dunker, November 3, 4, Trey Whiskey Bravo is at 10,200 feet, climbing 11,000 feet. Dunker, November 3, 4, Trey Whiskey Bravo, Indianapolis Center, continue to proceed as planned. Altimeter, 29 decimal 72. Order us to climb, come on. Dunker, Trey Whiskey Bravo, climb and maintain flight level 190. Up to one nine zero. Here through Bravo. Maintain flight level one nine or zero. Dumber Trey Whiskey Bravo. So that gave you a little a little hint as to why I uh, always set the alt the altitude selector a thousand feet higher because it waits until the last possible second to order you to climb. So I figure I uh, be a little more efficient there. A lot of airplanes in the area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probably didn't even need a cruising altitude quite this high on such a short flight. Yeah, just check something. Let's uh, ask for 17,000 instead. Indianapolis Center, Dunker Trey Whiskey Bravo. Request 17,000 feet. Okay, good. So I reduced our cruising altitude from 19,000 to 17,000 just because it's becoming apparent to me that we're moving right along and uh, going to be there soon. So you need to spend all that gas climbing and you're just going to immediately start descending. Sorry. We're at uh, 14,000 feet right now, and we're going up to 18, 17,000. We're going at 1,800 feet per minute, so we'll be there in about 90 seconds. Wind's now 30 knots. Dollar Tree Whiskey Bravo, contact Indianapolis Center on ONE 24 decimal 775. 24.775, dear Whiskey Bravo. Going to ONE 24 decimal 775, Dollar Tree Whiskey Bravo. Annapolis Center, this is Dave with you at 15,000 or 17,000. Indianapolis Center, Dunker, November 3, 4 Trey Whiskey Bravo is at 15,200 feet, climbing 17,000 feet. Dunker, November 3, 4 Trey Whiskey Bravo, Indianapolis Center, continue to descend as planned. Altimeter 29 or decimal 72. 29 or 72, let's adjust that. 
to see he said continue to see is planned that's the way point we're headed towards what was that delta airlines flight number fifteen ninety one i always like to check that stuff on flight aware just out of curiosity fifteen ninety one is a real flight in progress as we speak where the one five nine one it is from atlanta to indianapolis well what do you know took off from atlanta at uh, 12 43 eastern landing in indianapolis 204 eastern so just about what 14 minutes out very cool that really is a fun thing to incorporate into the sim in terms of uh, immersion and realism. Don't ask me how they do it, software from a software standpoint. But they look at that pharma. That's a, that's a screenshot right there. Anyway, they to to have air traffic control refer to real flights by their correct flight number and even their their company name and then confirm that those planes are really there it's pretty wild 37 knots and we're headed into that right now so it's slowing us a little bit i'm kind of wondering where the weather is i i looked at satellite imagery i guess it looks like it is getting it is clouding up Well, we weren't up at 17,000 for very long, were we? 17, down to 11,000 feet here at Mr. Bravo. Descend and maintain 11,000 Well, you can see why I requested a lower cruising altitude. Making a left turn now at DC, headed towards Higma. Left at DC, towards Higma. Showing us just 16 minutes at our current speed. 79 miles from the airport. This this is a nice quick flight for sure. But safety's paramount. Yeah, see, so it is clouding up. Pretty good. Pretty consistent with the, my satellite imagery, which showed it clear over American Indianapolis and cloudy to the east of Indianapolis. But let's see, let's see. Three hundred twenty-one knots right now across the ground at seventeen thousand feet because I haven't begun my descent like an idiot. Ugh, man, that's embarrassing. It's okay. We're about two minutes. I'm surprised they didn't yell at us to expedite our descent. Well, that's a good sign. The fact that they didn't yell at us to expedite our descent means that you're still within a barely tolerable error window. I swear the scenery in this game is going to be the end of me. I end up looking out the window, taking screenshots. So I'm doing a slightly steeper descent than I normally would, just to make up for that 60 seconds or whatever it was. I'll check later that we should have initiated our descent. But again, the fact that ATC didn't say X by your descent means that it wasn't problem causing as it relates to our ability to get to where we need to be in space. Let's go ahead and deal with our minimums right now. Check those uh, earlier, and they are uh, 1,260 feet barometric altimeter, meaning that's above, uh, above sea. Whoops, what, did that work? No. Okay, let's try that again. 1,260. Enter. There we go. You see, that's now depicted here. Barometric minimum, 1,260. Meaning that's as low... We cannot go below that altitude unless we see the runway. You can also use radio altimeter, which is how high you are above the ground, which I think, because the airport elevation is 896 feet, the 
RA, the radio altimeter minimums are like 400 feet, which is, you know, do the math, 800 minus 12, 900 minus 1200, 60, basically about 400. I prefer to use the barometric minimum just because this is the altitude that's depicted on my my screen, on my PFD, not the radio altimeter. Although you will notice, you may have noticed before, that an RA thing will appear here with a number next to it. And that actually, when you get down to below 2500, that actually will show you how high you are above the ground. Sort of designed to be used on approach because it's basically unneeded when you're cruising. I mean, if you're 20, unless you're above the Tibetan Plateau, you don't need to know how far the mountain is below you. So we'll make that left turn. You saw this just turn magenta. And then this will come in here in a second, but I'll zoom out and see if we can make it out. I still can't press the B key. See? So we're going like that. Turn south. Nilra is, you can just make it out, Nilra, right there, that's where we're headed. But I expect to be ordered to descend, let's acknowledge that. Maintain present heading and altitude, expect ILS runway 18 center approach via Nilra transition, clear to Nilra, Docker Tree Whiskey Bravo. So remember, we need to, we know that the airport's at about 900 feet, so we need to basically be at about 4,000 on our altimeter when we're about 10 miles out from the airport. So this may be, who knows, you're, you're going to watch this with me. This may be a scenario where we do not get cleared to land. Or, I'm sorry, we don't get ordered to descend until like the last possible second. I know that at Nilra, I need... Three, one, keep on, descend and maintain huh. 8,000 feet. There you go. I was just about to say, at Nilra, we need to be at 8,000 feet. That's what it says on the published approach plates. I'll acknowledge that. Descend and maintain 8,000 feet, Docker Tree Whiskey Bravo. It does not look like a situation where we're going to be ignored. Anyway, 8,000 at Nilra, 7,000 at Hypeb. See that? Hypeb? This is so specific, this step down. 8,000 here, 7,000 at Hypeb, 6,000 at Philob, 5,000 at Juber, 4,000 at Zevi, and then 2,400 at Whatbu, which you can't see here. Nilra, N-I-L-R-E, November, India, Lima, Romeo, Echo, is the IAF, the initial approach mix for this runway. Descend a little faster than that. Got a tailwind now, 17 knots, because we've turned to the northeast. That's going to speed us along. Go ahead and activate our inertial separator now. Landing lights. Never turn those off. Whoops. Oh, well. Such a short flat. I guess I don't feel too guilty. Beautiful countryside, just beautiful. All satellite imagery, so it's a cool change from the previous versions of Flight Sim, where it was just you could just use Auto Gen. It is cloudier, but not as uh, bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought we would be in much cloudier weather than this, but the weather has changed to the credit of the sim. It is. Uh, Not like it was when we took off. Knowledge Master Caution. And, and based on what I saw in the satellite imagery, it's just getting cloudier the farther east you go. Make sure we're good. We are on ATC. Go ahead and... Uh, American 846, contact Indianapolis Center. Deactivate our pedo heat. Don't need that right now because the air, outside air temperature is 13 degrees and getting warmer. I thought we might have to deal with some icing on this flight, but alas, no, which is just fine with me. One, two, three, decimal, nine, or two, five, American, eight, four, six. Leveling out at 8,000 right now. Remember, we don't need to be at 8,000 until we get here. So here we are. We are four minutes, 10 seconds. There we go from Nilra, and we're already at the appropriate altitude for Nilra, so Flight Sim likes to bring you in 
low with plenty of room to spare, which they've done in this case. Tailwind 13 knots. Got some thunderstorm activity you can now hear. Airspeed holding at about 176. We'll up that a little maybe. All other respects, I think we're set up pretty well. Showing about 12 minutes now. I figured I should try incorporating some of these shorter hops a little more often. But I like all aspects of this sim. Long flights, short flights. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, uh, when are you going to start doing, you know, sophisticated aircraft? And I was like, <laughs> excuse me? The TBM is a very sophisticated, high-performance airplane. Uh, it, 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 there's some controversy concerning whether it's, it's even properly characterized as a general aviation aircraft, just because, you know, it flies with the airlines. 31,000 feet is its certified ceiling. And, I mean, I've done 420 knots across the ground on this thing. So, what do you tell us to do? 35-125, dear. Good day. 135-125, decimal 125 for Dover Tree Whiskey, Bravo. So, we'll go over to Indianapolis Center. Indianapolis Center's day with Bruce Bravo with you, 8,000. They'll hand us off to approach here in a minute. Two nine or seven five on the altimeter. We'll just our two nine seven five now. Still holding at eight thousand, which is fine. Having access to the approach plates is really important in this game because. Absent them, I wouldn't know what altitude I was supposed to be at at Nilra, or Hypeb, or Fella, or Juber, or Zevi. But now I do, and so I'm not worried that I'm being held at 8,000 feet, because I know that's exactly where I need to be at when I get to this triangle. And then to descend in 1,000 foot increments to these following waypoints, so. Outside of temperature 14. So not... Not bad weather, all things considered. I mean, if you stay beneath the clouds, it's probably a pretty nice VFR day. VFR visual flight rules, which, were, which prohibit you from entering clouds or allowing clouds to come between you and the ground. That's VFR. A little more comfortable outside, so we'll turn our heater down slightly. Keep that inertial separator on as we begin our approach and descent. Cabin pressure currently at seven, equivalent of 7,123 feet, which is safe in a pressurized aircraft. Pretty uh, normal. Definitely cloudier, so I'm not unhappy with the with the uh, weather predictions. I suppose if you start complaining about uh, the accuracy of weather predictions in a flight simulator. You aren't paying a lot of attention to the accuracy of weather predictions in real life. Okay, we're going to turn right now, as you can see. We're going to turn due south, 180, that's uh, south. 090 is east, 180 is south, 270 is north, 360 is north. It, sorry, 270 is west, 360 is north. And we're making that right turn now to line up with runway 36. Correction, 18C, 18 center. If we were coming in from the south, we would be landing at runway 36. Start slowing down. 180 knots right now. Here comes Nilra, specifically 45 seconds, 44 seconds away. Just seven nautical miles from Nilra. We should be handed off to approach soon. And then the tower after that. I am curious to see what happens when we land if I 
reactivate the taxi ribbons, what happens? Will it show taxi ribbons at Cincinnati on the ground, or will it still think that the taxi ribbons apply to my departure airport? I'm not sure. But I've got access to airport maps and diagrams and so forth, so I can handle that. Still in a gentle right turn. A buddy of mine showed me a screenshot of his setup, and he's still got a traditionally sized monitor, which I used to have, and I, I just couldn't believe how little it looked. And I'm sure it's not. I mean, I didn't think my old monitor was little. But boy, compared to this, this rig, I've got this Asus 49 inch 13 by 9 aspect ratio monitor. It's amazing. Hey, just as I said, we're going to get to descent instructions in thousand foot increments. Just start with 500 feet per minute right now. Let's continue slowing. And here's where it's useful to know how far we are to the next waypoint. Once we cross Nilra, which we will in about 40 seconds, two miles. Now, see, Nilra is our next waypoint. 1.8 miles, 1.7. Continue slowing. Once we cross Nilra, we'll know how long it'll take us to get to the next waypoint of Hypet, at which we know we need to be at 7,000 feet. So that's why I didn't want to do too aggressive a descent, because 500 feet per minute guarantees you at least two minutes to descend 1,000 feet. Just basic arithmetic. Okay, here we go crossing Nilra, and now we've switched over to high pen. 23925. Anyway, showing three minutes, or excuse me, three nautical miles, 55 seconds from Hypeb, and we're at 7,300 feet, descending at 500 feet per minute, just spot on. Let's switch over. Indianapolis Center, it's Diego Cruz Bravo with you at uh, 7,300 feet, 7,000. Center, November Tree, Fort Tree, Whiskey Bravo is at 7,300 feet, descending 7,000 feet. Now they'll hand us right off again. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to landing. There it is. 23875. So hand it off to approach who will then, after that, hand us off to tower. Cincinnati approaches is Deirdre Rousey Robert with you at 7,000. Cincinnati approach, Dobber November Tree, Fort Tree Whiskey Bravo, 7,000. Put our gear down. Air November Tree, Fort Tree Whiskey Bravo, Cincinnati approach. Continue to fill up as planned. Altimeter 29 or decimal 75. So we know we need to be at 6,000 for Philip, so we'll start our descent for that. And you know what I think I never got around to doing? God almighty is entering the ILS frequency. Good grief. 1, 1, 1. 1.55. Ah! 1, 5, 5. Transfer. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and set that on the PFD. Bearing 1. There it is. Good. Okay. Down to 5,000 there, the Whiskey Bravo. 5,000 is the appropriate altitude for Juber. Right here. See? Okay, so let's uh, switch that to 5,000. We'll increase our descent rate slightly because we know that Jute Fellab, which is where we're heading now, is uh, 3.6 nautical miles away. And then Juber is beyond that. We're at 6,700 feet right now. We need to be at 5,000 at Juber, so we increase our descent rate slightly here. Airspeed's good, though. And then we'll switch over to APR. Be, which is the approach function. Oh, look, you can just see. Just make out 18C right there. Right there. Big airport. Jeez, huge. There's the cloud cover. Not seeing any. Oh, there it is. There's that white diamond. Okay, we need to be lower. That's okay. That's good to know. Not, not critically lower. 
approach by a nil transition. Remember, when the diamond is low, that means you need to be low, and when the diamond is high, it means you need to be higher. Down to 4,000 here, Whiskey Bravo. Climb and maintain 8,000 feet. Expect IRS runway 18 center approach via Nilra transition clear to Nilra southwest 1029. Oh, Jesus, I got a freaking 737 coming up behind me. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet. He's not nearby, though. But he's next in line to land because he just got cleared to Nilra. I'm sure you heard that. Make sure I don't have to say. We're good. Okay. So, anyway, we're handling the descent here. And this white diamond is moving up. That's just just really grand news and makes me happy because it means that we're guaranteed to see this white GP turn green. Putting, uh, we got our gear down, obviously. Our airspeed's fine at 130. They didn't tell us to keep our speed up, but I'm going to keep my speed up a little. Look at the trees. I can't believe those are all individually rendered. Is it just the golf course? Nice. Is it just me? I don't know. I, maybe I'm just too smitten with this, but this just... Oh, I'm going to get in trouble again. Not to, I'm so busy looking out the window, drooling. The uh, diamond here looks good. We should intercept that glide path. Glide path. Air tree whiskey, Bravo descend and maintain 2,400 feet. Hmm. Just wondering why it's a glide path if we're at on an ILS frequency. It's interesting. Hmm. Okay, flaps. Now this game never. Sorry, my bad. I'm busy. Descend and maintain 2,400 feet. Again, 2,400 feet is the assigned published altitude for what boo? isn't showing up on this, but it's on it's on the approach path. Doesn't really matter, to be honest. We've got the airport in sight. I'm kind of wondering why... Oh. No, it's on. It's on APR. Hmm. That will shallow out our descent rate a little here, just to keep this white diamond down here in the middle. Pop up in the seat. I'm gonna have to. I, it'll be fun to go to Flight Aware when I land, and run Southwest 1029. And I guarantee you, if you do that, you'll see that that is an aircraft that landed at Cincinnati today. And local time here for me is 11:15. UTC, Greenwich Mean Time 18:15, and the Central Time. What, to, well, 1.15 in the afternoon, so really cool. Yeah, not grabbing the glide pass. The only thing I can think of here is that I may have inputted an incorrect ILS frequency, that I can't stop doing what I'm doing, and I don't have to because I've got the airport in sight. All right, full flap deployment. Air tree whiskey Bravo, you are eight miles north of Cincinnati. Contact tower on one one eight decimal tree when inbound on the approach. Acknowledge that. Tower on one one. Airspeed's perfect, eighty five knots. Whiskey Bravo. Wind is perfect, eleven knots. We'll have to check uh, that later about why we never grabbed the glide slope. Come on, god damn it. What is this? Yeah. Anyway. That's funny listening to him yell at that Southwest flight. 
Well, we're just uh, in a good situation right here. There's no aircraft behind us. That southwest guy is getting ready to start the very approach that we're on. Yeah, see, so he was just ordered, she was just ordered to descend to 8,000 feet, which we already mentioned is the approach altitude on the plates for uh, NORA, the IAF, the initial approach fix. So this is just sort of easy peasy lemon squeezy right now. We might be about to grab it. At least this has turned green. So keep your fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Five hundred feet per minute descent. Headed straight into a nine knot headwind, which is nice, pleasant. No crazy uh, crosswinds to deal with. I can make it out, but I. It's a Vossi, okay, vertical approach, a slope indicator. Red over white, so we're great in terms of our uh, where we are on the glide slope. Southwest 1029 are descend and maintain 7,000 feet. Three mile final. Bouncing around a little more than I expected. 85 knots. Okay, we're leveling out at 1,600 feet, which is what I ordered it to do. Remember, our minimums are 1,260. So question, this blue green diamond, now that we're not descending anymore, is going to start to plunge, and that should trigger the interception of the glide slope, which should have happened a while ago. I'm, I'll, I'll study this later. Well, they're coming up behind us. <laughs> There it goes. All right. Better late than never, friend. Grabbed it. Turned green. Yeah, that southwest flight is uh, hot on our heels. And maintain 5,000 feet. Southwest 1029. Beautiful. Nice lake, or nice river. Nice day. 21 out, 21 degrees out, warmer than I thought. And you take a look there at the Vossi now, red over white, just perfect. 500 AGL, 500 feet above ground level. Airspeed's perfect. Reconfirm, three in the green. Full flap deployment. I'll take the airplane, autopilot disengaged. Ooh, he's right on our heels. You can actually see him on the MFD if you could zoom in right now, but I can't. It's probably about five miles behind us. We're going to go left after we land, okay? Left. And then we're going to try to vacate this runway as quickly as possible. Because that guy's coming up our butt. 12,000 foot long runway. 11,000 feet. Anyway, not an issue. But we got to get our butts off the uh, runway because he's coming in fast. Looking get really good on this approach. Southwest 1029 er descend and maintain 2,400 feet. Oh, geez. He's right on us. Idle uh, now. the old brakes on that one. We're getting off this runway because he's coming up fast. There we go. All right. That was great. Here, let's go outside. This could be fun. Just check something. He's coming in. I don't know out there somewhere. Anyway, good opportunity to showcase the braking abilities of the uh, TBM. We needed to... Southwest 1029, you are eight miles north of Cincinnati. 
There you go, eight miles, okay. All right, now, so we're at a huge airport, a busy international airport, and I'm a TBM. So I would love to have the taxi assistant. So let's see what happens. Okay, this is our little uh, little thought experiment. Uh, uh, navigation aids. No, no, no. T taxi ribbon. Okay, you ready? Get ready. Let's see what happens. This could be interesting. Fly and save. Now, is it going to sh show me? Let's switch over to ground. And then let's see if we get ribbons. Come on, give me ribbons. Taxi to parking. Come on. November tree four tree whiskey Bravo request taxi to parking. Dollar November tree four tree whiskey Bravo taxi to general aviation parking by taxiway Foxtrot Kilo. FK Foxtrot Kilo. Oh, hey, we got him. Taxi to general aviation parking by a taxiway Foxtrot Kilo Docker tray whiskey Bravo. Nice. Okay, well, this is a temporary workaround then. So it, it seems confirmed then that it's related to landing at uncontrolled airports. Okay, uh, flaps are in. Switch to taxi lights, turn the pulse light off, and let's go. Looks like we're, I don't know why we're going this way just to end up here, but I'm going to play ball. Hold position. Hold position. Down her tree. Whiskey. Bravo. It's that that guy. Delta one six eight four. Hold position. Caution. The down her TBM nine on the taxiway. Oh man, he's she's holding the delta for me. That was nice of her. Hold oh, position. Delta one six eight four. Well, why'd you hold us both, sweetheart? I can't go, he can't go? Maybe it's because I kept moving. Let's see, I'm curious about something. If I stop, will she tell him to proceed? No. Okay. Well, I was going to stop. I just didn't stop right the second you told me. So we're going to have to dodge these, uh, this giant plane. <laughs> no, wait! Let me get out of your way! Ooh, I... <laughs> that was funny. Okay, anyway. Luckily, the uh, lights don't uh, constitute actual obstacles in this game. Okay, so anyway, we had to do a little detour around that guy. Roger, Docker Tree Whiskey Bravo. Hmm, just responded automatically. All right, so Roger anyway, make our left turn here, and our little hour-long episode of the Continuing Adventures of Dare Three Whiskey Bravo comes to an end. Short flight from Indianapolis. There's a bus. He's headed right at us. As Lloyd Bridges' character said in the movie Airplane. Watch, let's go through the bus. This will be a metaphysical experience. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that's funny. Anyway, got some thunderstorm activity still here. I think I see Gary. See, if I followed this blue ribbon, I would rip the wing off of that other TBM, which I don't want to do. So that Delta right there, you see they haven't, there's no active liveries right now, so it's just using generic colors. That Southwest guy probably should have landed by now. I'm going to do that when I watch this replay. I'm going to see if that, ooh, cool lightning. Confirm that that airplane landed at Cincinnati this afternoon. So to the people on that Delta flight, which, let me, well, hold on. I just want to run that on Flight Aware too, because those are actual people that are getting ready to leave Cincinnati right now, as I sit here. And I bet you a dollar they're like, hmm. they would never believe that TBM almost took them out today. 
Okay. Take our left. There we go. And boop. Brakes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Brake. Acknowledge alarm. Kill the engine. But I had trouble starting. So I was just going to say, I wonder what that Delta flight was. Delta 1684. Okay, we'll check that later. Whatever it says, my, I'm confident that it will say that Delta 16... 1684, Delta 1684 was uh, taken off from Cincinnati this afternoon. And it'll be fun to see where they were going. We'll find that out. Inertial separators off. Flaps are up. Lights. Turn off. Leave the trim. Fuel selector to manual. Ox boost pump off. And finally, we'll depressurize the airplane. So, here we are. So, if you're in Cincinnati right now, maybe you can tell me whether this weather is accurate anyway. But the outside air temperature is 22 degrees, which I think is 73? I think 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, friends, we'll go outside for our final look. All parked, Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. Might go on a bourbon tour. Love bourbon. Anyway, I, I missed that. Uh, there's that Delta guy. There he is. Um, I never did see that Southwest guy land, but uh, if you listen to the radio traffic, you'll hear how he was coming up behind us. He was being given the same directions and instructions that we were a few minutes earlier. So, I... Uh, Wow, that's quite a thunderstorm. I think that the uh, sound effects for the thunder are a little over the top, to be honest, but I'm not complaining. They're cool. Uh, anyway, what I was going to wrap up with was that uh, I uh, definitely heated my brakes up <laughs> on this uh, landing. Uh, but uh, the TBM's fully capable of short field takeoffs and landings. And the fact is we were going 80. 85 knots on touchdown? 80 knots, maybe? So, it's not inconceivable that you could, especially on a runway that long. I mean, it might look like we stopped early, but the runway's 11,000 feet long, so this airplane's capable of landing on runways a third of that. Or even less. I mean, you could probably put this... I've put this baby down in Tower, Minnesota on a 2,600-foot-long runway. Didn't seem to have any problems. Anyway, I'll be quiet now. Got your hour-long episode concluded. Safe in Cincinnati.